17-year-old Alex Batty has celebrated his first Christmas with his grandmother in six very long years. The teenager went missing when he was 11, when he was taken abroad by his mother and grandfather. He was discovered, as I'm sure you know, alone, walking down a country road in France last month. And since his return, Greater Manchester Police have launched a criminal investigation into an alleged child abduction. Well, Alex and his grandmother, Susan, join us now for the first TV interview since their reunion. Alex and Susan join us now. Hello, both. Hi. Welcome Hi. home. Thank you. How do you feel? Yeah, good. Yeah, you're feeling good? You're adjusting OK? Yeah, 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 it's all yeah. right. It's all how, right. Was, how was Christmas? Great. What did you do? Um, it was quite small. Just me, my grandma, my granddad and my uncle, okay. her son. Um, presents, obviously. Um, and finally, after six years, a proper Christmas dinner. <laughs> <laughs> we have turkey. No, no lamb. Lamb. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's it. So it's the first Christmas you've had together for six years. Yes. What have Christmases been like up until this um, point? Not celebrated much, to be honest. No. You know, not a lot of money, so you can't do, which is normal for a lot of people. Um, I mean. Last Christmas, I made a chicken curry. Not exactly a Christmas <laughs> dinner. <it's>... No. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's not not really celebrated. But it's not a big deal, is it? It's just it's just another day, really. When you look back um, to when you were eleven and when this first happened, how much do you remember of it? I mean, um, um, and what were your thoughts when you realised you weren't going to be coming home? At first, for the first few years, I was actually quite happy about it really? because I'm a kid and I'm back with my mum because I wasn't with my mum when I was in England. No. Um, but after a few years, I started to realise it's not the best for me. Because you didn't have any real companions your own age, did you? No, only in the past six years I've met one, maybe two people my own age that I made friends with. And of course, you'd lost complete, obviously, complete touch with all your friends at school. Yes. And you had a good network of friends, didn't you? Oh, yeah, big back, back here in Manchester. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, absolutely. So what was life like for the last six years? Um. Boring, to say the least. Is it? Um, Why? What do you mean? Isolated, very, right. very isolated. Uh, from my own peers, at least. I've a lot of people older than me, which as a kid, it's not really, you know, it's not fun. No. It's quite boring. Um, so what did you do for fun? Read. I read a lot of books. That's movies and books, but mostly books. Who was your favourite author? Uh, J.K. Rowling. Harry Potter. All the Harry Potter stuff. All the Harry Potter so stuff. So that's very interesting. You, you did the classic thing to escape into books. Absolutely, escape into yeah. Reading. Yeah, big time. Really escaped. There was a moment, Alex, wasn't there, a couple of years ago, where this all got too much and you yeah. decided, this isn't right. Mm. I want to be back home. I want to be with my grandmother. Yeah. Did you also think, I want to see my friends, I want to go to school? I did, yeah. And, and so what plans did you start making then um, at the age of kind of 14, 15? It wasn't, it wasn't really physical plans, it was more emotional plans. Yes. Trying to big myself up and get ready for leaving my mum and my granddad. And because of course that's putting them at risk. Um, and also emotionally preparing for actually coming back to England. Did you talk to them about the fact you wanted to come back? I did, yes. Um, I had thoughts of leaving back to England when I was 14 and I talked to my mother and my granddad about leaving for the first time when I was 16. And what was their reaction? Um, my mum's, it was an absolute no-go from her, but for my granddad it was a case of you, I want to do what's best for my life and he was completely understanding of that. And just tell us about the actual day that you, you walked away. Did you have any second thoughts before you did that? No, not really. You were certain? Um, certain, yeah. Um, it was a normal day, to be honest. I didn't think I was gonna... It was a very, very quick decision for it to be that day. Um, Why? Why was it a quick decision? I just realised it was time, that, just like that. And then it was probably around 7 o'clock when I realised I gotta go. Hmm. So I made food for everyone. Played it chill, of course. Um, <laughs> and then around half ten, I wrote the note. Um, and by 12 o'clock, I was gone. Where did you leave the note? Why? Why? Where did you leave the note? Oh, um, just on a countertop in the kitchen. OK. And, and what did the note say? Um, just basically saying how much I love them, how I'm thankful. 
for what they did and I know that it was out of love for me that they did it. Um, it's just not best for my future. It's not a lifestyle you want to be living at all. Um, not to worry about me because they know I can take care of myself. Um, that's it, really. You've kept your Manc accent, haven't you? I have, yeah. <laughs> I have. Everyone says that. And what about your French? How good is your French? Um, yeah, it's decent. I understand a lot more than I speak. Well, um, that's true of most people. Yeah. It is, yeah, especially yeah. first language. So you've had basically a sort of itinerant lifestyle. You've been a bit of a nomad. What sort of accommodation were you staying in? Was the one place or a variety? Oh. Were you always on the move? Always on the move, yeah. And, um, and working for money and preparing food. What sort of jobs did you have to do? Um, it was a lot of, mostly construction work, yeah. um, cash in hand. It was renovation work, decoration work, um, demolition work. We just finished a demolition project, actually. Really nice apartment it's going to be. Wow. <laughs> so, Anna, that's something. I wish I'd seen it. So you worked hard and you took pride in your work. But, yeah, but this isn't what most teenagers, young teenagers, should be doing, of course. What was your mum's explanation for why she wanted you to live this life? Um, she's a very anti-government person. Right. Um, very anti-government and very spiritual. And that's the reason she wanted to take me out. And you don't... You, you have an instinct which is almost to protect your mum, well, isn't it? Of course, it? I don't want her to go to prison. And, and when you left, mm -hmm. you, your sort of escape route was deliberately done to sow seeds of, of confusion and doubt yeah. to the authorities, wasn't it? Yeah. What did you do? Um, so, am I OK to use hand signals? Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Yeah? OK, so imagine we're living here, right? Yeah. And I have to get to a big city which is... I want to say a eight hour walk, something like that in this direction. Mm -hmm. So my plan was to walk from here because I knew the, the entire area, like the back of my hand here. I went to this village over in this direction. Completely the opposite Completely way. Completely the opposite way. And then looped all the way around back through just so that I could lie to the police and say that my journey was of three, four days. It's almost a military strategy that. Extraordinary. You know, I, I said to you in the break, we were chatting in the break, and I, I said, having seen conversations you've had since you've come back, you're an extremely articulate young man, and you said, oh, everybody says that, but it's true, you are. Oh. And given that you, you haven't had the stimulation of companionship oh. um, over all this time, it's remarkable that you should have such a great command of, uh, of English. Yeah, just things people say, it's not really, you know. No, it's true. A lot of people have said it. Well, well, well. Well, look, Susan, we, we ought to talk to you again in the break. I said to you, did you ever give up hope? And you kind of said, in a way, you did. Um, but after six years had gone by... Um, I learned to live with the pain. Hmm. It took a long time to learn to live with it. Um, and I, I think I got to the point where... It wasn't so much that he wouldn't come back one day. It was, would I still be around? So I fear that now he's home, all them fears have gone. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing to wake up in the morning and not have that deep pain in the pit of my stomach. Was that there? A big every hole day? every single every day. day. Yeah. But the difference was I learned to live with it. I had to. Mm. Can, you, can you forgive what, what his mother did? Yeah. Yeah, I don't want her to go to prison. I don't want his granddad to go to prison. I, I, I really don't want that. And you, obviously you don't want that. That's why you left on this circuitous route. You, yeah. You've done everything you can to protect them. Absolutely. Do you think you'll ever see your mother again? Uh, probably not, no. That's, that's a big thing to, to think. Not really, I don't mind. Well, you've said, you've said in the past that she's a, she's a lovely person, mm -hmm. but just not a great mum. Yeah. Um, not a great mum be because of what she did. And just her overall actions and the way she acted um, as a mum, you know. I understand that, I mean, a lot of kids go through it. You know, your mum is kind of detached from you. Yes. Um, and it, that's just how it feel, felt at all times, right. you know. Um, but a lot of people go through that. It's not really. When's your birthday? February 13th. What are your plans? Um, Absolutely hammered with my friends. <laughs> <laughs> and you've been in touch with your friends, yeah, have you? Yeah, yeah, I have, I have. So you just reconnected? Yeah, yeah. It feels like no time's passed, to be honest. Is and it... you're going to 
go back to college, are yeah. you? Yeah, plan is Oldham College. Um, to do your A-levels? Computer A science degree. Or to do a degree. Yeah, yeah, either in business or IT. Will that be difficult for you, given that you've missed out on so much education? I mean, um, you've, you've read a lot, mm -hmm. but uh, you've missed out on education. I would assume so, of course. Yeah. You know what, Susan? He's had a different kind of education. True. Yeah, true. He has to catch up with the other education, yeah. mm. which is having an assessment um, on the 8th of January. So we take it all from there. He's a remarkable... Uh, you're, you're going to keep saying, no, I'm not, but he's a remarkable oh. young man. You must be... You must have wondered what it, he would be like when he was yeah. on his way back, when you got yeah. the call from the French police. Well, I mean, he was back. always very bright. So, uh, uh, you know, I just... You knew that, yeah. I knew that, yeah. Just remind us the moment that you heard from him. <laughs> How did that come about? I was on the floor in our living room cos I'd fallen. And I, I didn't know that I had a message on the phone. Oh, when I eventually, 20 minutes later, got up, the phone started ringing and it was the police telling me that, that Alex was in a police station in France. And I was just... And then a bit later on, I realised there was a, a message on Messenger of Alex telling me that he's coming home, I want to come home, oh. and I love you, Grandma. Oh. And it was just... Who was the first person you shared that with? My husband. Mm -hmm. He was walking the dog when I fell. That's why I, I couldn't get up, because he wasn't there to get mm. me up. Um, and how did you tell him? What exactly did you say to him? I said, Alex, is, Alex is, is coming home. Is, is and, he, and he was as flabbergasted <laughs> as I was, yeah. you know. Um, and then we spoke to the police, and the police came to see us, and they said we're going to... Um, I couldn't travel that far to France to go and get no. in. I can't, I can't. I'm not very good on I've bad mobility. Um, and they said my husband could go, his granddad could go mm. and to France with them and, and bring him back. Mm. And, and this was the, the text message that you had sent from the phone of the chap who picked you up. Yes. In it's the first France. thing you did. Um, no, it wasn't actually, well, I, for, I completely forgot that I could put, get in contact because I'm not used to using no. social media or anything. No. And, but he mentioned it and I was like, wait, that's a really good idea. <laughs> so, of course, it wasn't a text, it was through um, Facebook, Facebook Messenger, yeah. wasn't it? Because yeah. I was thinking... How would you know How would I know? Hard to exactly. remember yeah. Grandma's yeah. number. Yeah. Yeah. Well, funnily enough, the numbers were on his um, social media page. I'd right. put them on there. All right. right. But I don't think he thought of... No. No. So, it, luckily, there was Messenger, yeah, so... Well, the, I must the say... The powerful, sorry. positive benefits yes. of social media. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. To, to reconnect change. you. Yep. Yeah. Look, it is remarkable talking to you. You're, you are a remarkable family, and thank you very much indeed. You, it's interesting, your instinct is still to be defensive of your, of your mum. Do mm. you want police to be investigating or, or I not? I don't. For the past six years, from the moment it happened, I, my entire... For the back of my mind has always been worry. Um, for, for your mum and yeah, your granddad? Yeah, and my granddad. I remember the, the first few months... Um, <laughs> this is silly. Um, I was waiting outside our house, um, and they were 15 minutes late. I started bawling my eyes out. I oh. thought they'd been <laughs> caught. I'm in the street, crying my eyes out with loads of different people <laughs> staring at me. And they come back and they're just... What the hell are you doing, Alex? Mm. <laughs> you said that you don't think you'll ever see your mum again. Do you think no. you might see your grandfather again? I don't think I'll see any of them again. I'd no. like to see my granddad again, definitely. Mm. But if it doesn't happen, no. it's, it's, they know I'm all right. I know they're all right. Well, I have to say, if you were my grandson, I would be incredibly proud of you. And, and, you, and you must be incredibly proud. Yeah. Oh, look, look how it's turned out. Yeah. He's I a know. remarkable young man. You left 11 and came back like this. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, hopefully you can have, you know, a normal college education. Hope so. Get together with your friends. Yeah. And... Yeah. and hoping to get a part-time job as well, aren't you? Yeah, of course. Well, yeah. it sounds like if any well, construction studying, companies you know. want, uh, oh, want a hand... No, I can't. <laughs> no. Going back to that. Uh, no. I can't. That. That what any, kind of yeah. work would you like to do? Um, anything, honestly. Just not construction. Not construction. <laughs> right. That apartment job is definitely it's in the past. the last job, yes. Alex, Susan, thank you and good luck. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. God bless you both. Thank, Thank you, you for coming in. Thank you.